Ladies and gentlemen, for the ones in attendance and the millions watching around the world, the Big Bad Network presents the High Flying Podcast. Podcast. The High Flying Podcast, where we be drop kicking it with the boys. So make sure to body slam that like, share, and subscribe button. And your host, Biggie Bag Johnny, back with another video. And today, you know what it is. It's Tuesday. We are live. We getting ready. Let's do what we do. And it's my favorite dark side of the ring. We doing Brutus the Beefcake Barber. A.K.A. Hogan's Luggage Man, the boy, and stuff like that. But yeah, guys, uh, we're going to get straight into it. It ain't really much to talk about. You know what I mean? We're going to try and run through this as fast as we can. So with all of that being said, I need every one of you guys to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. po 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 please. Appreciate you, man. Uh, yeah, man, just subscribe to the channel. Turn on all notifications so you know when we drop. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, this might be a little late because of the live delay. I wasn't able to uh, stream live, so yeah. Listen to the ovation for Brutus the Barber. Fan favorite Brutus the Barber Beefcake helped define the golden age of the WWF with his larger-than-life persona. The blades are part of me! Brutus is known for cutting and strutting. He was very popular, very charismatic. But backstage, Brutus had to fight for respect due to a lifelong friendship with the industry's biggest star. Wherever Hulk Hogan goes, Brutus the Barber Beefcake goes. Ever. Hulk took him under his wing like a little brother. They were best friends. So why would you not want to help somebody that helped you so much? Everything I was getting is because I worked my ass off. While at the top of his career, a devastating accident leaves Brutus shattered. This was one of the most traumatizing moments that I'd have ever witnessed. His face is totally smashed. And I'm telling everybody, my face is falling off. I never thought he'd recover. He almost died. Hulk just says, you're going to live, you son of a bitch. You're going to get better. Leading to a reversal in fortunes. He had everything and then nothing. And a falling out with the friend who had carried him to the top. Hogan is a class act. And if you are loyal to Terry, Terry is loyal to you. But don't ever betray him. Saving face, Brutus the Beefcake story. Subscribe to the channel, the High Flying Podcast, with your boy Biggie Bag Johnny. At all platforms, you know what the fuck time it is, guys. Let's go. In 1984, Vince McMahon's WWF was transforming the wrestling business into pure spectacle. And Ed Leslie, a young wrestler from Florida, soon became one of the era's most memorable characters. I love Brutus, so do a whole lot of others. The fans like to be entertained. And let me tell you something. This Brutus character was entertaining the hell out of them. I'm Brutus, the Barber Beefcake, WWE Hall of Famer. The crazier I got, the wilder the things I did, the people loved it. Because it's about connecting with the people. His wrestling wasn't even that great, please. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nasty Boy Brian Knob, one half of the Nasty Boys, and I know Brutus Park Beefcake back in the 80s. Like in our era, it was like rock star, like the Rolling Stones or something. That's one of the reasons I got into business. <laughs> Beefcake was a rock star right along with everybody uh, on the WWF roster. People would recognize you no matter where you went. 
I'm B. Brian Blair, and many of you know me as one half of the Killer Bees, and I had so many matches with Brutus the Barber Beefcake that I can't count them all. Beefcake is a muscular guy, basically, um, with a nice butt. That's why they call me the Beefcake, because I had the Beefcakes. He's holding his Beefcakes. Definitely sizable, Tutimus Maximus. God gave me one hell of a body. I'm going to show it off. I got to say it, brother. I was the best looking thing they'd ever walked through their doors today I had on TV. Look at you, sex pistol over there. Shut up. <laughs> That's what my wife says. She goes, you were the best looking wrestler. I don't care what anybody says. You know, watching all of this stuff, like I full on bought all this stuff. Like I'm such a... The wrestling fan, like, this is, was not fake. I started watching wrestling on Sunday mornings. One morning, out comes this guy, and I just... <sighs> my eyes spun, like hubba hubba. My name is Missy. I'm the wife of Brutus the Barber Beefcake. It was like tunnel vision. Like, I am in love with this friggin' guy. Who is he? The first time I met Missy in 1986, Boston Gardens, she snuck in the backstage area and she come running over and yelling, I love you! I love you! I was like a, a little taken back at that point going, oh my god, f this girl's beautiful. So how did you reconnect with Brutus after all these years? Um... Huge wrestling fan, internet dating, you know, you meet guys online, and oh, what do you like? Oh, I like wrestling. So I was talking to this one guy, I'm telling him, you know, my Brutus Beefcake story, and he says, oh, Beefcake lives in Winchester. Wh what? I'm in Quincy, hello? So I texted him and I said, um, I want you to know that I'm a huge Brutus Beefcake fan, and it, it's been a fantasy of mine to sleep with you. And I just wanted to know if you thought that was possible. The phone. Ring, ring, ring. ring. Hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can, you know, can, can we meet? This is pretty f***ing exciting. But I wanted it just to be like a one and done. I didn't think, you know, anything was going to happen from that. Um, <laughs> he kept calling. When we started dating, he'd say, I'm your friend. That's a total different person. That girl right there looks like. Britney Spears. I'm, I'm your best friend. And I used to say, I don't. That girl looked like Marge from Mob Wives. Big Ange. That's who she looks like. I don't know what the fuck happened to her. Way too much plastic surgery. She fucked it all up. She had it, pat down, and then you fucked it all up. I don't want a best friend. I just want somebody to love me. And then. Fast forward, I realized a friend is the best thing that you can have. If Brutus calls you a friend, it's huge, huge. The base of all of his goodness comes from there. It's a friendship from his childhood in Tampa, Florida that leads Ed Leslie into wrestling. While Ed will become Brutus Beefcake, his childhood friend Terry Balea will transform into the wrestling icon Hulk Hogan. Me and Hulkster grew up eight blocks apart. We were all in the same circles, same high schools. He was in a rock and roll band, played a bass guitar. And I see him and his buddies all at the beach. They called it Mad Beach. I was just a young punk kid hanging around. I'm the kid that would quit. I always came back. I always showed up. They couldn't get rid of me. One day, Hogan says, guys, I'm going to try to break in the wrestling business. That was his deal. He was a rock and roller and wanted to be a wrestler. So the phone rings. Hey, kid, want to be a wrestler? <laughs> so we start working out twice a day, six days a week in our little homemade gym. And after like 12, 14 months, we were both monsters. Terry gets the opportunity to train professionally with the legendary hero Matsuda and then shares what he learns with Ed. Terry was getting stretched in the dungeon, and it was very, very difficult. 
you fight for your life and survive or you run out without your clothes. Whereas Beefcake was just basically tossed straight from the street to the ring. He was very fortunate that he had a great friend like Hulk Hogan who nurtured him and did everything he could to put him in the ring with the right talent to get him to first base. Well, uh, a lot of people don't know me because I'm relatively new to the business. I've just come into the scene, you know, recently. Terry. Holy shit. That is what Hulk Hogan looks like with a head full of hair. It's, it's like Triple H in the Attitude Era with Bob Holly and fucking Edge or some shit. Holy. He helps Ed break into the industry by making him his tag team partner. Living together out of a van in Pensacola, the two are inseparable. Whatever Hulk was doing, Brutus was right there, and Brutus was always just his ride or die. We were friends, we were bonded, friends to the end. People would always say, you must be brothers. And we finally said, I think it's time just to say, okay, yeah, we're brothers, and go with it. Our gimmick was... We were bigger and stronger and, and better looking than everybody. Yeah, the Hulk and his brother Eddie Bowler will be right That's there. what we did, the Bowler brothers. And a bunch of different names where we were brothers. Dizzy Hogan, the brother of Hulk Hogan. And Terry Funk. He named me Dizzy. He just like, you're Dizzy. Making a lot of money and everything, you know? Why was he Dizzy? Uh, kind of like a, a, a male valley girl, if you will. Play with it a little bit, you know, count it once in a while. Busy, busy Hogan. While Terry was going off to stardom, he always had Brutus right behind him. After lighting up the territories, Hulk makes the jump to the WWF and soon becomes the face of Vince McMahon's empire. Hogan was over in WWF from the minute he got there. I mean, the immortal Hulk Hogan. I mean, it goes down in history, probably having the biggest career in wrestling ever. Struggling to gain traction is Dizzy Hogan. Ed gets the opportunity of a lifetime to step into a new gimmick conceived by Vince's wife, Linda. Linda has this beefcake name in her head. Hulk, he says, what about Brutus? Like Brutus and Popeye. What about Brutus beefcake? And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, oh my God. Here's my chance to wrestle in Madison Square Gardens, and my name is going to be Brutus Beefcake. I couldn't even say it without giggling and laughing. And I was going to be Brutus Beefcake the Chippendale. So I came out with spandex. I had a bow tie with rhinestones. I dropped about 25 pounds, dyed my hair black, and cut it real short, and walked in to Vince's office in this outfit, and Vince nearly fell out of his chair and said, oh my God, how can this not make money? Brutus Beefcake. Beefcake was a very colorful guy, but he was an average worker. What they gonna do off the road? When they put Brutus with Greg Valentine, who's one of the premier technical wrestlers ever in this business, solid, believable, hardcore. It just really helped Beefcake learn how to work. Beefer, to his credit, adapted very, very well. He was really finally understanding um, the art of the business. He was green, but he was good. I could see the potential. I'm Greg the Hammer Valentine, WWE Hall of Famer. I was Brutus to Barber Beefcake's tag team partner. Not only did we draw money, but we had a lot of fans that cheered the bad guys, the heels, and they they loved us. Brutus was a chick magnet. I mean, I could get girls that wanted to, but we're talking about Brutus. Boston is our town, Hammer! He talks too much sometimes. The fabulous Moolah. Look at that day. face! Look at that face on her! He gets on a whim, and I go, shut up, man. <laughs> no, but we were a perfect combination back then. The match made in dream team heaven. Our matches were, were incredible. The people went 
nuts over them. That was the point where we knew, like, we've made it, brother. Tag team champions. After almost three years of success as the dream team, the decision is made to split the pair and for Brutus to become a colorful new character. And they hand me this white cosmetology jacket and they give me a pair of scissors and say, now you're the barber. What, what, what do you mean, I'm the barber? Don't you think you maybe should have given me a little warning? First thing I do is I go in the dressing room and just start breaking everything I could find. Finally, they, somebody went and got, found Hulk. So you better go find Beefcake. He lost it. He's, he's tearing the place up. So he comes in. What's going on? I said, what's going on? This is what's going on. I quit. This is bullshit. What does a barber do in wrestling? He says to me, what if you use the sleeper hold and put your opponents asleep? You get the scissors and you cut off some of their hair. Look at he's got a pair of scissors. The guy thinks he's a barber now. Brutus the barber, beefcake he wants to be known as. <laughs> I was strutting all over the ring. We're going to talk about strutting and cutting here. And then cut. Remember, it's not whether you win or lose, but how you cut the hair. This is horrible. You could see that Eddie had matured, and he was taking strides that made Brutus Beefcake into one of the premier WWF characters. What are you going to do when the barber and Hulkamania run wild on you? It definitely didn't hurt to be Hulk's friend. And definitely Hulkster helped Brutus out big time. Anytime they mention Brutus Beefcake, they always mention, oh, well, he's Hulk Hogan's best friend. It can help and it can hurt you because jealousy of the friendship, that's all. That's all it is. Jealousy. I'm Missy Hyatt, the first lady of wrestling. Or I like to be called the walking riot. And I'm really good friends with Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Whether he was Hogan's best friend, he wouldn't have been in WWE for as long as he was. Unless you draw money for Vince, you're not going to be there. People could think whatever they want. It didn't matter. I didn't care. And a slip shot. I was good at what I did. I was at the top of my game. It's all we had WrestleMania in March, beat Mr. Perfect, and then the next step was SummerSlam, take the belt, boom, and get to where I was supposed to be. But then Brutus was in a catastrophic accident. I can picture this like it was yesterday. He was living a nightmare. Nobody knew whether Brutus was going to live or whether Brutus was going to die. time it is man time to go subscribe i know you niggas is watching i know it's time all my high flyers go subscribe and right now here we are holy cow we're in lutes florida at the lake house scene of the crime where brutus <laughs> nearly lost his life man this was a heck of a party house guys there was no other docks there was not as many houses and stuff as there is. By 1990, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is one of the most popular stars of the WWF. July 4th, and I had one day off. <laughs> so I'm gonna party like it's the end of the world. We're in the boat, we're gonna have a band set up later on the outside in the back, and, and we're gonna party all night. Mike Hannis, who's a friend of Beefcake's, he had a really fast, ski boat and he liked to take people parasailing around the lake everybody was having a great time we had just been parasailing for hours several people had had near catastrophes so we were actually thanking our lucky stars and nobody's hurt doing the parasailing today and we're done and then brian blair the killer bee and his friends a couple people came roaring in and they wanted to parasail. I wasn't about to go up there because it didn't look like the safest thing in the world to me. But a friend of mine, Tracy, wanted to go up in the parasail. Mike, he's like, no, no, we're, we're done. And they wouldn't relent. Mike finally just, he's pissed. He's said, all right, all right. But at that time, there's no wind to fluff the parachute up. 
beefcake stood in the water above his waist. Myself and another guy named Paul was holding up the parasail. Eddie's responsibility as a rope man is to communicate with the person about to take off in the parasail, and he also has to communicate with the boat driver. So I'm out in the shallows there, trying to get the people set up up there on the grass. We got everybody ready to go. Mike just said, F it, I'm going, and just took off. Eddie drops his hand, and as he does, he turns in. And so he's right in Tracy's line of fire, right in her flight path. She's coming right to the back of my head. It's happening so fast, nobody can even yell, look out, move, anything. As she sees that she's not getting lift, she buckles her knees up to try to clear Eddie's face. And I turn around just in time to get her knees right in the face. Boom. It hits me so hard that it pulls me out of the water and I do a, what's called a gainer, where your feet go over your head first and then come back down. And by the grace of God, I wasn't knocked out. And I'm down, like, trying to get my shit together. Can't see a thing. Can't breathe. And nobody has any clue that I've been mortally injured. I ran as quick as I could, grabbed him from the water. Everything was shattered from the nose, the cheekbones. His whole upper jaw was sitting on top of his bottom jaw. I force my hand in my mouth. I lift my palate up, saying, my face was falling off, my face was off. He couldn't speak, he tried to speak, but it was only gurgles coming up from his throat. While we were waiting for the ambulance to drive, I just kept Eddie up and uh, conscious, trying to keep him from falling asleep. I didn't know anybody could be hurt that bad and still, and still be alive. Listen, man, I'm trying to get through this shit and, 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 and get through this motherfucker, right? But this motherfucker broke his face. So that they said the whole top of his face was just sitting on the bottom of his jaw. That's crazy. They rolled me into the emergency room and they take my blood pressure and realize it's like 200 over 100 or something. Next thing you know, they're yelling, code blue, code red, code purple. Finally, x-ray my head and realize that my face is gone and they have no idea what to do. It's the 4th of July and the phone rang. So the guy on the phone said, it's a Brutus beefcake. He is severely injured and they need your help immediately. I said, Brutus beefcake? Never heard this name. And then my son yelled, Dad. This is Hulk Hogan's partner. My name is Mutaz Habal. For the fact that you're a doctor and you're like, your patient is Brutus Beefcake and you're like, I don't know what the fuck is that Brutus Beefcake. And then your son goes, oh, that's Hulk Hogan's partner. Bro, you was Hulk Hogan's lackey like all day, bro. And I am a plastic surgeon. By the time I arrived, I remember I asked, because he was so big, how could somebody smash him like this? I said, well, Doc, please just kill me, because I'm done. I can't take it another minute. The pain is unbearable. He was uh, uh, totally fractured. Of course, the first thing we want to determine is that he had a good airway, because if a person cannot breathe well, or there is something obstructing the airway, of course they can pass. But I was uh, more worried about that he may lose uh, vision. Working over the course. Uh, nigga, you more worried about my vision than my life? Bro, your priorities is fucked up as a doctor, my guy. You said you're more worried. What? Of 16 hours. Dr. Habal and his team of specialists reconstruct Brutus's entire face. It's like building a house. And I really always like to build the house uh, from the stable area to the unstable. 
A lot of his skull was stable, so I started from the top. They cut me from ear to ear, across the top of my head, peel my face down and my scalp back, and then using strips of titanium, he's going to rebuild my skull. The most important thing in the face is where the eyes go, how far they are. Put the eyes in where position, put the nose where he is, then put the upper teeth, the lower teeth, and then we sew the eyelid together so the person will not be able to see for 24 hours at least. After the surgery, they took me to ICU to uh, in a drug-induced coma, basically, for me to wait for a couple of days to see what happened if I kept on living. <laughs> but I can't see, I can't speak. Everything I had worked 20 years for was gone and wasn't coming back. Yo, bro. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know how fucking disturbed I am of just thinking about this shit, bro. I'm so disturbed. It's not a joke. Like, to think about what that man would look like and just, just, just the fact that it's just like, yo, you're... I don't know how much of a dark side this is, but it's very disturbing, bro. And, uh... <sighs> just, wow. Like, Holy fuck moly shit. Uh, subscribe to the channel, man. The High Flying Podcast. Uh, right now, that's what you tuned into. So subscribe, motherfuckers. Following surgery to repair Brutus Beefcake's shattered face, he is put into a medically induced coma. With no guarantees for his survival, doctors contact the one person Brutus can depend on. And they said, um, we need somebody there to talk to him because if he if he wakes up and he panics, we need to have a familiar voice. Both of my parents had died within two years. I, I was going through a horrible divorce. I, mean, I had brothers and sisters and family, but I mean, I've been gone for 15, 20 years on the road. So the only person that I was really close to was Hulk. Concerned about his best friend, Hulk Hogan leaves his pregnant wife in California to be at Brutus's bedside when he wakes up. They said, look, we bring him out of this drug-induced coma. We have no idea what's going to happen. Is he going to freak out? Hulk, he says, don't worry about it, Brutus. I'm going to take you home to California. We're going to get you better. I don't care what the doctors say. You're going to live. The only luck thing about for him is the impact was right in the middle of his face, between the eyes. If it was on the right or on the left, he would have lost vision in one of those eyes. Surviving is a miracle. To regain his vision is, is also a miracle. Terry was there, you know, talking to him. They walked down the hallway and Brutus's eyeball fell out. Popped out of the socket. And Hulk's looking at my eyeball popped out. Just, oh my God, Doc, we got to get him back. Eddie's recovery had to be extremely difficult because he had to learn to speak again. Um, he ate liquid for so long because think about it, you can't chew food. This is a grueling, grueling comeback. I know he had a lot of prayer warriors out there. He had a lot of people pulling for him. Yeah. Something if me and you are friends and I go to the hospital and motherfucking I'm walking you and I'm trying to do rehab with you and your eye pops out, bro. We're no more, my nigga. I don't know you no more. Like being your friend takes too much responsibility that I don't want anymore. So we are no longer acquaintance or we we I don't know you like that. Call it fucked up, call it what you want, bro. Hulk Hogan is a way better man than me. Because let a nigga tell me that I'm walking him down the motherfucking hall in a hospital and his fucking eye pop out. Yo, nurse, come get this nigga. I'm out, bro. Check you later. I'll call your mother or son, bro. I'm out, bro. Where she's dressed. Sherry Martell. Sherry Martell and I were friends. 
So Sherry comes to see me and the guys are like, you can't react. They're trying to prepare her. So, when you see him, you can't react. Because if you do, you might, you might totally freak him out. Door opens. Sherry has like this big stuffed animal and cards and stuff. Takes one look at me and goes, ah! <laughs> She's just so ghost or something like screams first thing they do is like grab her and throw her back out of the room like you you trying to kill the poor guy and she's out in the hallway screaming and crying oh my god oh my god I I was almost laughing I was like that was a shit ever that's real funny shit it set the tempo kind of for me. Then You know, it's like, I can't feel sorry for myself. Sometimes you don't get the cards you want, but you got to play them anyway. The only thing I hoped for was to at least be recovered so I could do something. You know, nobody expected me to ever really come back to wrestling. I remember he pulled up at my house and I looked at him like, oh my God, I just felt so bad for him. As soon as I was able to get back in the gym and start working out, my body responded instantly. It was like magic. I'm with Hulk. We're in California training and getting better and getting better. The doc says you, you just you can't wrestle. And I had no intention of wanting to get in into the ring and die. With recovery costs mounting, Hulk ensures that Brutus doesn't go broke. Doing the movies. You know, I was looking for a new career, hoping for something to come out of this. I wouldn't look behind me for a million bucks. I hate to say he was carrying Hogan's bags. That's not right. You know, you, first of all, you have a lot of jealousy. You're a lot, probably a lot of people g- glad he got his head knocked off. Uh, and that's bullshit. People look at him like, oh, Beefcake, all he does is carry Hogan's bag, or he carries Hogan's drugs, so if he gets caught, it, you know, it'll go on to Brutus. Yeah. Why would you say that? Why would you, first of all, if that's your man, you got your man looking like a fuck nigga, so why would you put that out there? Why would you put out anything about Hogan having drugs or anything right now? Like, well, why... Why would you need to put that statement out there, bro? Uh, that you you stupid for that one. He had his gimmicks in his bag, and you know, money. He trusted me with his money and everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, eager to get back into wrestling, Vince gives Brutus his own regular interview segment called the Barber Shop. Barber Shop time, Brian. This is what you've been waiting for. He doesn't look different. Barbershop was fantastic. Welcome to the Barbershop, ladies and gentlemen. The thing you can't buy is hard. But the snake is still standing. Oh, my God. Could have went on and on and on, but the Barbershop was destroyed by Sid for WrestleMania 8. That's the way they do things. Had WWE, they created it, they destroy it. With the barbershop having run its course, Brutus is taken off WWF television as Hulk takes a hiatus from wrestling due to the steroid scandal that engulfs the business. They were counting on me to deliver Hulk to them to to be prosecuted and Vince too. They thought I was going to be their golden goose. Didn't happen. I said, no, 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 none of this shit ever happened. I don't know what anybody's talking about. Help save his ass and Vince McMahon's ass too. Returning to the WWF in 1993, Hulk Hogan is reunited with Brutus Beefcake as his new tag team partner. Beefcake had a match for WrestleMania, tagging with Hogan against Ted DiBiase and IRS Mike Rotundo. Uh, I was another gift from Hogan. Irish whip, far side, the knee right to the face. You know, the idea was, let me see how I feel in the ring. Do I feel like I can do this every day? It felt good. 
Brutus's comeback is short-lived as he's soon dropped by the WWF and returns to the independent circuit. It's not until Hulk signs a massive contract to join WCW that Brutus gets another opportunity to revive his struggling career. He came with Hulk Hogan. He was what I refer to as the Hulk Hogan tax. Hulk didn't demand anything, but we had an understanding <laughs> that if he wanted something bad enough, I had to pay for it. <laughs> I'm Eric Bischoff, and even though I'm here to talk about Brutus the Barber Beefcake, I'm happy to be here. Everybody in that locker room knew that the only reason Ed Leslie was in that locker room was because of Hulk Hogan. They are shitting all over this man. I think that's pretty fucked up, but you must have been a fucked up person or, or just a fuck boy, you know what I mean? But, you know, who knows? Subscribe to the channel, man. I'm going to let you know what I completely think after this episode, so tune in. And the only way you're going to be able to know that that's going to drop is if you keep tuning in once in a while, or you can just subscribe to the fucking channel. Let's go. I always fucking tell y'all. In 1994, Ed Leslie once again follows his friend Hulk Hogan, this time to WCW. With the Brutus Beefcake name owned by the WWF, Ed cycles through a number of different characters in WCW. Butcher, the man with no name, Zodiac, the booty man coming out here. What's I was able to become a character. I was able to do it with four or five different gimmicks. In my mind, that's an amazing feat. It's like being a, a good actor like Mel Gibson. Brutus thinks he's as good as Mel Gibson as an actor? <laughs> that made me laugh there. That's a good one. <laughs> Last night and took it off. I mean, all them other gimmicks didn't get over at all. Brutus pretty much conducted himself professionally while he was in WCW, for the most part. I, th I think Brutus was there for the party. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, he was a partier. He was a drinker. And I've been on the back of his motorcycle when we've had one a couple too many, but I trust him with my life. The day I got fired from WCW, I called him. He actually saved my life because I was getting ready to jump out the window. And he talked me off the ledge. Brutus was the savior. Brutus was the savior. Why do you have to humiliate somebody and give them all these stupid gimmicks? Brutus was treated like shit at WCW. After the booty man and the butcher and the man with no name, Eric Bischoff is basically saying, we can't repackage beefcake anymore. Oh, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I went home, I went to Florida. I spent two, three months growing my hair really long, dropping my body fat content to 5%. 45 years old and shredded to the bone. He looked like a god. He looked like something... From Grecian times, he was just sexy, 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 sexy. I'm schwitzing over here. <laughs> Flew to Atlanta, went to CNN Towers, home of WCW. Hulk says, I got to introduce you to my new disciple. And oohs and ahs. Who is this in the ring? And then he says, oh, did I mention that that's Brutus Beefcake? So I stuck it right up all their asses. Boom. Big, hard, bam, right up the ass with that one. How about that? Despite his radical transformation, Brutus fizzles out at WCW, but bigger problems await. He had a money manager that stole all the money and went to like Barbados or something. Stole a lot of hulks too. You're a millionaire one day, and the next day you're selling your house. I poured everything I had into this home where I planned on living my life out, and now I had to sell it. So now my now ex-wife takes my daughter, moves back to Boston where her parents live. To provide for his family, Brutus makes the difficult choice to move to Boston, taking a job as a toll collector for the Metro Boston Transit Authority. 
and it was brutal to have to live in Boston for 12 years in that cold, miserable place. He was in a bad marriage, living in an attic, worked nights with rats running across his feet. That was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, but I was doing it for my daughter. This particular time, instead of aspirin, I used to have these called BC powder. I don't know if you've even heard of it. You just dump the powder in your mouth and you absorb it real fast. One of my BC powder little packets fell out on the floor. I did my shift, packed up, left. Lady came in, saw this little tiny thing down on the floor, picked it up. When she tried to open it, the powder just went poof. And she started screaming anthrax, anthrax. And there was that big anthrax thing. It was like, you know, it was like COVID, you know. And they shut the train station down. You want the truth, you want me to lie. No, I want the truth. It wasn't anthrax. It was cocaine. (laughs) If anybody falls on hard times, anybody's got a problem with drugs and addiction, they make those kind of stupid mistakes. Unfortunately, this one scared the hell out of a lot of people. It's aspirin in a little, like a little packet. You can understand why people would not believe that, right? Yeah, oh, 100%. But why wasn't he arrested? He wasn't arrested. It was a big embarrassment. They made him go to rehab. Eventually, when I went back for my uh, review, they fired me. They let me go, which I was extremely happy about. Out of a job and with his marriage ending, Brutus is forced to reckon with the toll wrestling has taken on his body and his life. When you're a wrestler on the road, 350 days out of the year, your body is beat to shit. Just to get in the ring, nine out of ten guys had to take something for the pain. You take the pill, you have a little drink. It's very habit for me. I can't do these pills and I can't do this anymore because it's it's, it's going to take my life. And Missy took me in and gave me a home and a place to live. Her And she was there at a time that could have went either way. His friends, or friends, would give him pills and drag him around to bars and say, we got Brutus Beefcake. Brutus is not a loser like that, but he had a habit. He had a up life, and he was numbing himself. Wait a minute. He had a habit? He had a fucked up life. That's friend is Hulk Hogan. Listen, bro. We have weeded out all of the assholes. All of that is gone. Go subscribe to the channel because I swear to God, I'm going to rock this bitch when I motherfucking do my motherfucking review later today. Matter of fact, I'm doing my review right after this shit, so subscribe. Here's the force. I never play with it though, because I'm too afraid I'm gonna break it. What? Missy Beefcake. Okay. You don't even know how he proposed to me. He would always say, I want to marry you. You're the love of my life. Nobody's ever done the things for me that you've done. Wow. How exciting. What could you like 33 years ago tonight? You were. Fourth of July. Cutie pie. Happy. She's an amazing woman. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's intelligent. She knows what she wants. And I love She sounds like a good woman. She sounds like she loves her man. For me. Love that about her. I'm so happy that he found someone that just tickles me to death. Brutus returns to the wrestling business in 2008 this time with Missy by his side. We did the Hogan and Friends thing. That was the first time that I met Hogan, but Brian Knobs was right there to tell me 
you're not in the fold until Hogan says you're in the fold. I was working hard uh, and wanted to get back to Florida. All the, you know, those years I was there, I wanted to go back to Florida. We visited um, with Terry and um, everything was great. We had a good time. We went out one night. Terry was singing my praises, telling Brutus how wonderful I was and how he was so happy for Brutus. And then we said good night. And then the next day we went over to Terry's house and it was like someone flipped a switch. And he was really cold. And I remember thinking, something happened, something's changed. I don't know what set him off, what happened. Because you probably, he probably tried to fuck. He didn't let him. And Brutus Beefcake, him and I had a falling out. It's got a lot to do with the ladies married too. We've heard that the incident between Hulk and Brutus stems from Brutus's new wife, Missy, and Hulk not liking her. Uh, no comment. Hulk is a very great guy and a very good friend. And, uh, you know, I can't see him, you know, being mad at you unless you did something. I don't pry into people's business too much, but, you know, Terry said, I mean, I had to write him off. His exact words, I had to write Beefer off, man. He's just too much. Uh, I think Beefcake took advantage of Terry. And, uh, you know, you can only have that happen so many times. You can forgive so much, and then you've got to move on. Were people trying to protect Brutus from you? <laughs> no. No, not in the beginning. Not until they realized that I was a take no shit. Brutus isn't going out working for $300. Not happening. Then I became like the threat. Though she's difficult. I feel bad for Missy because she's been so misunderstood by so many people. I have witnessed the monster. That jealousy is so horrible because she's so beautiful. She's so loving. She's so nice that people hate her guts. It's hard to have a relationship with someone year after year, 365, you're partying, you're hanging. Every day the phone rang, two, three, four times. They, they were close. And I know that he misses him. So where is it at now? They are not talking. Always comes down to the bitch, man. Always comes down. All right, so we're doing a poster. You got to put a fist up and make a mean look on your face because you take a couple pictures, all right? right? Okay, come on. Awesome. All right, cool. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. He is doing wonderful. People are always happy to see him. The fans, they come out. They love Brutus so much. And... Brutus makes everybody feel like he's known them for so long. When he's telling a story, like he's known you forever. Yes, they want to shoot us together. <laughs> he went through a horrible accident, and today he's back 100%. That's just a lesson to you and how strong Brutus is. So God bless him. Valentine, beefcake. He was elevated because of the company that he kept. But wrestling's all politics. You gotta have talent to stay there. And there's a lot of jealous people in the wrestling industry. I'm happy for every dime, every match that uh, Brutus ever had. Despite years of strained relations, Hulk Hogan comes through for his friend one more time when he inducts Brutus into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2019. Please welcome the immortal Brutus went through some really tough times. I was there when he had a terrible parasailing accident, but he came back and he made Brutus Beefcake larger than life. What's the man do when Brutus the Barber Beefcake has a haircut just for you? So please welcome Brutus the Barber Beefcake to the 2019 Hall of Fame, brother. They did you cool. They did. They did you really good. That's the last time you ever saw Hulk Hogan. That's it. 
was the last time you guys saw each other. Hulk and I were best friends and have been friends for years. We could be friends again at the snap of a finger. How would I know that uh, the guy in the front row heckling all the wrestlers at the armory in Tampa would become my best friend? You all know him as Hulk Hogan. I love you, brother. Thanks for all the good times and the good times to come. So my counsel th say thanks to the That's what my ambition is to, to hopefully be able to shake hands and, and look him in the eye and say, you know, thanks, buddy, for being my friend and, and all that we've gone through in our lives. And, you know, I, I love you. And boom. But like I said before, you, know, you get dealt your cards, you got to play them. And I'm perfectly, super, duper happy the way it turned out that I got my Missy, my soulmate, to be able to spend my, you know, my life with. Um, uh, no offense. I think Chilliwa Hulk Hulk is a little better than Chilliwa that chick. But, um, yeah, that was it, man. Dark Side of the Ring, man. Go subscribe to the High Fly Podcast. And remember that we do the aftermath after this. We go live, so check that out. And let me know what you guys think, man. Go subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think, all right? We out of here. The Big Bag Network presents the High Flying Podcast, where we dive off the top higher than RVD and Matt Riddle's love child with your host, Biggie Bag Johnny. Subscribe to the channel and stay up to date on all things wrestling related. So grab your belts and bongs, bad bitches with thongs, and watch whatever episode that you want to put off. It's the High Flying Podcast with Biggie Bag Johnny. Let's go. This is the Deathmatch King, Matt Cardona. You're listening to the High Flying Podcast of Big Bad Johnny. They said they were going to pay me. Where's my fucking money? What's up, guys? It's Steve Cage. We need to have the High Flying Podcast. It's Big Bad Johnny. Apple of the Dawn. I got it right this time. So everybody who missed the first couple blocks, you could be just there. All right, check it out. High Flying Podcast. Who better? <laughs> Thank you for all the doors that you opened up, so you got to bust through the window, and then we are all the time. When uh, in 2004, Eddie Guerrero came up to me and thanked me for opening up the door for the Hispanics. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That, that meant a lot to me yeah. when, he, when he told me that. So I, I 